let's do then join. So very late students, only 46. What happened? Hello. Yes, sir. Why was so late student today? Network problem, sir. So we start. So anyway, how was your exam, second assessment? Huh? So good. Okay. So one student has not appeared. He is there. Uh, of course, I've forgotten his roll number. And in today's class, who will be appearing in the makeup exam? He or she is here today in the class. Huh? Can you tell me your roll number? Who has not attended the exam? Good morning, sir. Is this Sekhar Saudri? Yes, sir. You have not attended, no? Yes, sir. So your makeup exam, I think shortly it will be there. So prepare well. Okay, sir. So Thank you, sir. Little, little, bit, little bit tough question, you may get it, okay? <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Is visible? The slide is visible? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir, visible. Okay. So, your connective tissue is already over or not in common classes? Hello? Hello? Okay. 
so in my last class am i audible yes sir yeah so in my last class we have discussed the systemic histology and the first topic that is organization of the organs okay organization of the organs how the tubular organs are organized as well as the parenchymatous organs are organized we have discussed so today we will go to see to the digestive system the first chapter of the systemic histology digestive system actually today it was the class of dr dole but due to his some assignment i am i'm just discussing tomorrow again i will take your class so there is just few points we are i am discussing today because he cannot take the class today dr dole okay so in the digestive system as you know first if we see the oral cavity oral cavity a first structure in the oral cavity you can see the lips the entrance to the oral cavity is given by the two lips upper and the lower lips so you can say the both the lips also they form the tubule like structures so here what you can see so in the tunica mucosa in the tunica mucosa you will find the lamina epithelialis lamina epithelialis mucosa lamina epithelialis mucosa and this lamina epithelialis mucosa which is the first layer of tunica mucosa it consists of stratified stratified squamous epithelium okay that leads the wear and tear and that is very much keratinized in ruminants and horses and non keratinized in dogs and pigs so the second layer normally you should find lamina propria but in the lips lamina muscularis mucosa is absent that's why you remember if you remember we tell a term lamina propria tunica submucosa or simply lamina propria submucosa why lamina propria submucosa because in the lips uh, lamina muscularis mucosa is absent so here lamina propria tunica submucosa it consists of loose connective tissue and serous gland or the serous mucous gland okay because i think you have studied the epithelium so you know the, what is serous gland and what is a serous mucous gland so serous gland where the nuclei are located do you know nucleus hello hello am i audible yes sir so in serous gland where the nucleus are located sir it is centrally located in the acne in the glands in the central central part nucleus is located but in mucus you will find nucleus is located at the peripheral part okay of the secretory cells in serous gland in the in the secretory cells centrally the nucleus is located in mucus it is peripherally located okay so you will find serous and serous mucus glands in the lamina propria tunica submucosa of the lips and tunica muscularis that consists of skeletal muscles mainly the orbicularis oris muscle you will find then when you come to the next layer it will be definitely tunica adventitia it is typical i'm not mentioning tunica adventitia because it is outside the uh, serous cavities coming to the sticks when you study the histology of the stick the same lamina epithelialis mucosa it consists of stratified squamous epithelium it will be keratinized in ruminants and horses and non keratinized in dogs and pigs okay so again here also lamina muscularis mucosa is absent so it will be termed as lamina propria tunica submucosa you will find the buccal glands that means in the propria submucosa you will find the buccal glands okay and that may be of serous or serous mucous glands and tunica muscularis it consists of the skeletal muscles coming to the heart palate so already you have studied heart palate uh, what is called grossly what is the heart palate okay osseous palate what you will find that whole heart palate is divided 
longitudinally by median peloton refree on either side, you will find a transverse ridges. But if you see the heart pillar histologically, you can see the lamina epithelial is composed of, or it is consist, or it is lined by keratinized certified squamous epithelium. Because heart pillar is also under exposure to the wear and tears against the oral cavity of just roof of the oral cavity. So its lining epithelium is keratinized certified squamous epithelium. And here also lamina muscularis is missing. You will find lamina propria tunica submucosa that consists of the dense network of collagen and reticular fibers. And you will find the palatine glands in the propria submucosa. So as it is paler, it is called as palatine glands. Okay. And mostly these palatine glands are located in the caudal part of the heart palate, except in peaks. That means in the peaks, you won't find the palatine glands. So propria submucosa, tunica pro, lamina propria submucosa consists of dense network of collagen reticular fibers with palatine gland at the caudal part, except in the porcine species. And muscularis, tunica muscularis is consists of typical skeletal muscle layers. Talking about the soft palate, again it is stratified coma the epithelium, but it is not keratinized, the soft palate. Lamina epithelial is mucosa is stratified coma the epithelium. Then propria submucosa, you will find then soft palate also the mucus or serum mucus palatine glands, lymphatic tissue. Okay. Mucus or serum mucus palatine glands, you will find lymphatic tissue. And these lymphatic tissue, they are aggregates because these lymphocytes, they will aggregate hadons together. Their aggregation of their product, it is known as lymphatic tissue aggregation is known as the tonsil or simply tonsil or the lymphatic tonsils you will find in appropriate submucosa of the soft pellet. Then coming to the tongue, sorry, yeah, soft pellet. Then the tongue, sorry. So tongue, what is the gross structure of the tongue? Do you recall the gross structure of the tongue? Grossly, what are the division of the tongue? Anybody? Hello? Uh, please, please just for Two minutes makes the video on all of you. Please make your video on all of you, all the students. All the students, please make video on. Everybody. Only few I have seen. Am I audible? All the students, please make your video on for just two minutes. video so from the gross studies gross anatomical studies that you know the tongue okay tongue is divided into how many parts three part that at the Near to the boundary of the oral cavity, you will find the apex of the tongue. Then the medial, the bulk of the tongue is called as the body. And then posterior side towards the pharynx that is called as the root of the tongue. That is a growth structure. Apex, body and root. Okay. So all the three structures, that means the apex, body and the roots, if you see histologically, it is covered by the mucous membrane. Mucous membrane. 
and this mucous membrane if you see on the dorsal aspect it is lined by keratinized stratified squamous epithelium dorsally where you will find the many papillaries so tongue tongue dorsally it is lined by because dorsally the mucous membrane of the tongue which lines the apex body and the root of the tongue it is lined by keratinized stratified squamous epithelium but on the ventral surface of the boot called the apex body as well as root so when you retrieve your tongue in front of the mirrors you can see the ventral surface of the tongue so ventral surface the epithelium is non keratinized the ventral surface is non keratinized okay ventral surface is non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium so within this dorsal aspect which is lined by the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium you will find many papillaries already we have discussed while you were here like filiform angiform palet polyet is not it and uh, what is called lenticular and conical papillaries let me point now what happens this papillary that means all the dorsal aspect dorsal aspect of this papillary is also is lined by the keratinized surface of the epithelium clear and now what happens this papillaries especially if you see if you see the papillaries some of the papillary like hangiform papillary helen papillary polyet papillary they contain taste buds what are the three papillary that contain taste buds hangiform helen and polyet papillary now what is this taste buds so these taste buds so taste buds means you will find these taste buds in only three different types of papillaries fungiform helen and the polyet papillaries and now what are these taste buds so these taste buds are nothing but these taste buds are electrolyte clusters of specialized epithelial cells you can say it is the clusters of specialized epithelial cells that is embedded in the stratified squamous epithelium of fungiform helen and the polyet papillary of the tongue Okay. so these are groups of specialized epithelial cells on the stratified squamous epithelium of the fungiform helen and polyp papillary tongue and most of the mammalian species within this taste buds which what is a taste bud ellipsoid cluster of epithelial cells and most mammalian species you will find three different types of cells within this taste buds okay in most mammalian species three different types of cells you will find it, okay and these three different types of cells are termed as type 1 cells type 2 cells and type 3 cells do not confuse because while you study the respiratory system you will find again different type of pores there are the word respiratory will be there type 1 respiratory epithelial cells type 2 respiratory epithelial cells but why we talking simply the type 1 cells so you remember this type 1 means this is pertaining to the cells of the taste buds so these are the three types of cells type 1 cells type 2 cells and type 3 cells but how these cells are differ so the while that we talk about the type 1 cells and type 2 cells so they are having the apical microvilli you know the already uh, general chapter we have discussed what is microvilli like take a single long cilia is termed as the microvilli like. you will find on the free surface or the cells or the apical surface so these cells type 1 cells and the type 2 cells on their free surface you will find microvilli that project into the taste pore so this is the characteristic of type 1 and type 2 cells what is the characteristic they have apical microvilli type 1 and type 2 cells have apical microvilli project to taste pore so now what is the characteristic of the type 3 cells So type three cells are characterized by clusters of cytoplasmic vesicles. So you will find in type three cells many cytoplasmic vesicles. They resemble the synaptic vesicles, and they are adjacent to the intraepithelial non-myelinated apparent nerve fibers. Therefore, type three cells are termed as chemoreceptor taste cells. So the difference between type one, type two cells, and the type three cell is that. type 1 and type 2 cells have apical microvilli and type 3 cells having cytoplasmic vesicles type 3 cells having cytoplasmic vesicle equivalent to synaptic vesicles okay 
and this type 3 cell is termed as a polyceptor cells. That means you can say in most mammalian species in the taste bug you will find type 1 cell, type 2 cells and taste cells or chemoreceptor cells but that is the type 3 cells. Okay? And these first two type of cells they are, they are having supportive functions. Okay? And about the lifespan of these cells about 10 days. So type 1 and type 2 cells they are believed to serve the sustentacular or the supportive role. They are having only supportive role, no test roles. Okay, so these type 1 and type 2 cells count as sustentacular or a supportive source. And the average lifespan of the cell is approximately 10 days. Lifespan of these cells. Which cells? The lifespan of the both test 1, test 2 and type test 3 cells is about 10 days. So then uh, that is about the lamina epithelialis. So while we talk about the next layer here, time also you won't find the lamina muscularis. So you will rather you will find the lamina propria submucosa. So in the lamina propria submucosa of the tongue, you will find many seromucous minor salivary glands, all the lingual glands. Okay. The chopro, so the tongue first you will find lamina epithelialis, you will find keratinized stratified squamous epithelium on the dorsal surface, tongue. Dorsal surface, keratinous stratified squamous epithelium, dental surface, stratified squamous epithelium, which is non keratinized. So all the dorsal surface, all the papillaries are lined by this stratified squamous epithelium, where you will find taste buds. And these taste buds are ellipsoid cluster of specialized epithelial cells, consists three types of cells type 1, type 2, type 3 cells. Okay? Type 1 and type 2, supportive role, sustentacular cells, type 3 cells having synaptic vesicle, equivalent to the equivalent to cytoplasmic vesicles. Okay, synaptic vesicle. Equivalent to the synaptic vesicle, that is a sign of uh, Cytoplasmic vesicles, which is related to the non myelinated apparent nerve endings, and they are called as the chemoreceptor cells. And in the propria submucosa, you will find seromucus, that means mixed minor salivary glands, which are called as the lingual glands. That is about the histology of the tongue. Comes to the teeth. How many types of teeth gross we have studied? Do you remember? What are those? Two. Yeah, you can say as for the eruptions, you can find there is four types of teeth that is incisor. Canine premolar molar. Okay, the sick tooth. Incisor canine on the basis of eruption. But if you see some from the structure, as the teeth on the basis of the structure is concerned, you will find two types of teeth. One is called brachydon and hypsodon. Okay. If we see structurally, structurally teeth are divisible in two types, brachydon and hypsodon. Of course, a little bit we have discussed in the cross. So, brachydon teeth means they have a distinct crone. Crone means the exposed part of the teeth. Our white part will really expose the crone. And then, constricted neck you will find and the roots which is not visible embedded in the alveoli. Alveoli of the jaw bones as well as the maxilla. Mandible and maxilla. Okay. So, so brachydon teeth means, brachydon teeth means it's have a distinct crown, distinct neck, and distinct roots. And the crown is covered by the enamel. Enamel, the brilliant white structures that extends down the neck. So in the brachydon teeth, <coughs> our exposed part, the white part you have seen, there is the enamel. Okay. <coughs> and the root, which part you cannot see, it. the root part is covered by layer of cementum. And just below the bone enamel and cementum, you will find a layer of dentine. This point is clear or not? Yes, sir. Okay. So that means, breaking down teeth means 
is having a crone, neck and roots. The crone part, the exposed, our exposed part, the brilliant white part, that layer is enamel. And the root part, which is not visible, you will find a root part that is, you will find a pass a layer of cementum. And below both the enamel and cementum, you will find a layer of dentin in case of breaking on teeth. And this covering of the enamel, cement, and dentin is little different in hypsodon I am coming to that. But in brachydon, it is very simple. Enamel is covered by, sorry, crown is covered by enamel, root is covered by cementum, and both below the enamel and cementum, you will find a dentin. An example of brachydon all teeth of carnivores, our human teeth, incisors of the ruminants, teeth of pigs, etc., the canine teeth. That is about the breaking of teeth. Come to the hypsodon, uh, hypsodon teeth. So hypsodon teeth means, as you know, there is no crown or neck like in brachydon, but only you will find a body, very long or elongated body. So in hypsodon, no crown, no neck, but you will find only the elongated body. And you can see the structure. So here, the crown part was covered by enamel, but here what is telling? Cementum covers the outside of the teeth, both above and below the gingiva. That means here, outer layer is cementum. But in case of brachydon, what I mean? Outer layer means on the crown part, it was enamel. But here, outside is cementum. And here, the outer part of the root was cementum. But below the board, root, Below the both cementum and enamel was the layer of dentin. But here you can see entire outside is covered by the cementum. Entire outer part of the teeth is made up of cementum and below the cementum you will find a layer of enamel. Extending throughout the length of the body and apex of the root. What the point? The enamel lies on a thick layer of dentin. Again, down to the enamel, you will find a layer of dentin. See, first is cementum, then you will find the enamel, then the dentin. And if so, then all teeth of horses, then seek tooth of the ruminants. Seek tooth of the ruminants is the hypsodon teeth, and the canine or the tax of the boar, canine teeth of the pigs or the tax of the boar is the hypsodon teeth. Is clear about the hypsodon teeth? Yeah. So now from here you can see. Uh, what is gingiva? Huh? Yes. Sir, in one line, gingiva. Huh? Uh, sir, what is the meaning of that word? You see this gum, gum is here, you know? gum. Cementum covers the outside of the teeth, both above and below the gingiva. So the gum, you see there is a protrusion part of the gum, through, means throughout the entire thing, and that part is the gingiva. So we will have in the gum, and that gum is, is extending on the entire surface of the teeth, entire surface of the teeth, okay? in certain points, that is the gingiva. So from here, what you can see uh, now, uh, what are the materials that are made up of teeth? Can you tell me? You have studied the brachydon and hypsodon teeth. So from here, can you tell me what are the substance that construct the teeth or what are the materials that made up the teeth structure? Sir, enamel, cementum and dentin. Yes, these are the three substance that is the enamel, dentin and cementum. Enamel, dentin and cementum which made up or which construct our teeth. Now let us see what is enamel, what is dentin and what is cementum. So while we are talking about the structure of the teeth, so you can say the mineralized tissues of the teeth, they are the enamel, dentin, and cementum. 
enamel the brilliant white part dentin you will find root below the cementum as well as the enamel in the bone of brachydontid and the cementum which is equivalent to the bone cement so now you can see the enamel covers the crown of brachydontid that you know enamel covers the crown of brachydontid but lies under a layer of cementum that is you know because in hypsodontid outer layer is cementum below the cementum you will find the enamel so enamel covers the crown of brachydontid lies under a layer of cementum in hypsodontid and it is very important point it is the hardest substance in the body what is the hardest substance of the body it is the enamel it is the hardest substance in the body about 99% mineral it contains and mostly it is hydroxyapatite and you will find 1% only organic matrix of the enamel so it is the hardest substance in the body having 99% mineral mostly the hydroxyapatite and 1% organic matrix and this enamel is so structurally of course you could have seen uh, in the histology slide histologically enamel is composed of long slender rods enamel prism to be held together by interrod enamels okay so this histologically you can see in the slides okay and enamel is produced by ameloblast ameloblast cells produce enamel so the three important part about the enamel is it is the hardest substance of the body it is produced by ameloblast cells and main content is hydroxyapatite hardest substance main composition of enamel is mineral hydroxyapatite and it is produced by ameloblast cell comes to the dentin so dentin it is the highly mineralized tissue it is the highly mineralized tissue that constitute the major part of the tooth it's the highly mineralized tissue that constitute the major part of the tooth so this dentin is underlies the enamel of the crown and the cementum of the root in the brachydontid that you know dentin where it is located in the subbrachydontid below the enamel and the below the cementum in the root it is located dentin and the enamel of the body in hypso in hypsodon dentin is located below the enamel of the body because in the hypsodon outer is outer you will find cementum okay then enamel then the dentin and who produce the dentin it is the odontoblast cells continue to produce the dentin throughout the life of the teeth but it is slower right after two erupts throughout the life of the tooth odontoblast cells produce dentin as far as the composition is concerned 70% minerals you will find 70% different minerals like magnesium fluoride hydroxyapatite all you will find but it is about 70% and 30% organic matrix but in case of enamel it was about 99% minerals and the 1% organic matter Yeah. So important point with the dentin is that it is produced by odontoblast cells. Odontoblast cells. Coming to the cementum. Coming to the cementum. So cementum, as I have told you, it is just like a bone. Cementum, it is just like bone. composed of lamellae with cementocytes that means it is a cementocytes that occupy the lacuni so uh, i think you have studied the cartilage so far or not hello can i tell you you have studied cartilage hello no okay so you see so cartilage by the way in next class you will study the cartilage so there are three types of cartilage hyaline elastic i think i have also told in the gross classes hyaline elastic and the fibrocartilage and this cartilage cells you will find two types of cells and is 
chondroblast and the chondrocyte cells. So chondroblast is younger cells. So, so these younger cells, when they try to become mature, what are they will try to secrete the matrix, organic matrix. And while they're secreting the organic matrix, okay, so their processes try to trap within the matrix and they form a depression-like structure. Depression-like structure and that is called as the lacuni. Lacuni. Yeah, that is a depression. Having just, you will find just like you can say the bowel type but it is not deeper as the bowel okay so lacuni means you can say one depressions where you will find uh, chondrocytes chondrocyte means the mature chondroblast cells okay so here it is the link cementum is like bone composed of lamellae with cementocytes occupied the lamellae and that means cementocytes also you will find within the lacuni and what happens upper part is acellular cementum that means what happened upper part means so cementum, where you will find, let us take the example of kidon teeth, where you will find cementum at the root of the teeth, is the teeth. Yes, sir. Yeah, cementum you will find at the root of the teeth. So in the upper part of the root, you will find there is a cellular cementum. That means this cementum is not having cells, that means cementocytes. So in the upper part of the cementum, the cementum will line the roots of the brachydontid okay so but in hypsodon you will find entire outer surface so what happens the upper part of the in case of brachydontid upper part of the root you will find there is a acellular cementum that means cementum will do not contain the cementocytes so instead what you will find here you will find their collagen fibers and these collagen fibers are specifically it is called as surface fibers. So they will extend from alveolar bone into the cementum of the tooth. That means these surface fibers, but surface is a specific name, but commonly these are the collagen fibers. So while you study connective tissue, you will find there are three types of fibers in our body. One is called as collagen fibers, another is called as elastic fibers, and another is called as reticular fibers. Okay, collagen, elastic, and reticular. So if you recall my earlier class, while we discussed about the ligamentum nuchae, so here mostly you will find it gives elastic, elastic fibers, okay? So when we are having any injury in our body, okay, then what happens? We take the lemons or other vitamin C. So that helps in synthesis of the collagen. There are different types of, uh, different types of connective tissue collagens are there, type one, type two, type three, or that you will know in your postgraduate level. But in general, you remember, there are three types of collagen fibers, uh, three types of fibers. One is collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers. So surface fiber means, this is a specific term, but that includes the collagen fibers only, that extend from alveolar bone to the cementum of the tooth. And these fibers, this fiber means, in general, the collagen fibers, specifically the surface fibers, they form the periodontal ligament, which normally bind the tooth in the alveolus. That means our tooths, our tooths you will find in the alveolar socket. So you in the jawbone, you will find the maxilla, or you will find in the premaxilla, in the incisor teeth. So these tooths are anchored or tight with the help of these surface fibers. Surface fiber means this is the collagen fibers, and that is called as the periodontal ligament that binds our teeth into the socket in the alveolus. Clear? So here, important point is that with the cementum, that upper part of the up in the cementum in the upper part do not contain the cementocyte is acellular, and bundles of collagen fibers, that is the surface fibers, they extend from alveolar bone to cementum of the tooth and they form the periodontal ligaments. So then we use, always use the term dental pulp. What do you mean by dental pulp? When see our tooth decays, we are very sensitive to our teeth, we feel pain. If something, what is, uh, if we drink cold water, if our tooth is having some problem. So that, that means the dental pulp, 
called a pulp cavity in the center of the teeth. Thank you.